JJ here from Better Than Data, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to know how much revenue is coming from every single lead generation effort you have on your entire website. Uh, it's something that we've really, really honed in and a lot of our clients love. I'm going to show you the hacky way. We would like to do this via BigQuery so we can run extra data uh, into extra columns about like lifetime value, about uh, initial source, maybe most influential source, etc. I'm going to show you the very hacky way to do this using Looker Studio and Google Sheets alone. So two sheets. Um, we are currently actually have a free offer on betterthandata.com uh, forward slash YouTube. You can go to the link right down below and you will find that you have free access to all of our foundation courses through the end of July. Uh, so you'll probably only have a couple of uh, weeks from when this video goes live until signing up for that uh, to watch Google Sheets, Google BigQuery, uh, GA4, all the things that you need to get started are in there and ready for you to take. So this is going to use that example and we're going to talk how to show you how to build something just like this. So now this is exactly what this form is. So you're probably wondering how does this data work? We have the contact form, the service inquiry form, the uh, request to quote, these are all dummy data. But here you have, for example, the number of unique emails who submitted this, number of transactions that came from those emails, the conversion rate, the amount of revenue that was generated, the average days it took to complete, and the average revenue per contact form, okay? So right here, you now know that contact us has the lowest average days in system, the newsletter has the highest or second highest, and the free consultation not doing too hot. In this, like you might want to apply this to your business, you might have webinars, lead magnets, cheat sheets, who knows what. And the beauty of this is that you can uh, validate it really quickly. So if I click on contact us, here are all of the emails uh, and everything else. So here you can see there's five transactions from the same um, from this one person who had five different emails. Uh, maybe you want to ask the number of unique people who bought it. You can change this however you'd like. So let me just show you how to do this. First things first is you need to have data. Um, so I have two different uh, data sources. We have leads and purchases. Leads, all you have to have is an email, what they did to become a lead and the date. So you can do this however you want. You can use webhooks, you can use an export, you can use, there's a lot of different methods of doing this, but you can do it however you'd like to. So here we have the date submitted. We have the contact, uh, the form name. So for example, contact us versus newsletter. We then have the email address. Uh, we have their first name and then their biggest problem. Those, these two right here are really irrelevant. So you don't need first name, you don't need biggest problem. You just have to have the date, what they did, and the email. So if you have those, you're good to go. The other thing you need is the actual transaction. So here we have a purchase date, the transaction ID, the product name, the amount, and then their email address. So here you can see that there is uh, a very small sample data set. Uh, we just did this for the sake of explaining and without having to show real PII, um, but this is gonna work for you no matter what. So let me show you how to do this. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here you have to add your data sources. So I'm gonna actually delete this and we're gonna use this up here as a reference just so you know what we're building towards. And I'm gonna add data. So let me add in via Google Sheets. We are going to add in our email tests and we are good to go. So here we are of leads and I'm gonna hit add really quickly. So now we have added our leads into the chart. Let's just add a quick chart right here. Bada bing, bada boom. Bam, there we go. So now we have our leads and this chart. Let me just copy the source. So if you command, command C at the top, command option V, we can get those big chunky words up at the top. And so now we have uh, our leads in here as well. Now we need to add more data. So let's add another data source right here, a Google Sheet, and we are going to pull in the email test again, and we're gonna pull in the purchases. All right. Okay, so now if we add in a chart, right here bada bum now we have email purchases so here let's just copy this one more time command c command option v get those beautiful big chunky letters so you can see along at home and so now we have our two data sources the next step of this is along with our blending is we really need to say for example is how are we going to join these together uh, and the, the thing we're going to join them on is email you might want to use your contact id if you have one but in general email is probably the best source because uh of the fact that emails people use to communicate. So <laughs> there we go. So here, let's just add in here. We're gonna add in the email. We're gonna add in the date submitted. We are gonna also add in the, that's it. All we need is email and date submitted. On the right-hand side, we are going to add in the email, the amount, 
purchase date and transaction ID. Okay, interesting. I've never seen a quota error on Google Sheets. Let's refresh, sometimes that does weird things. So here is our transactions, here is our emails. I don't really care about records, so we're gonna get re remove records. It's always just as a confusing thing just to count the number of lines there are. What we're gonna do first is leads are on the left and then transactions are on the right. I'm gonna hold the shift button and click on the right. We're then gonna right click and hit blend data, okay? So now we have a new data source. I'm gonna delete these other ones. If you need to see about how to blend, uh, there's a whole video, a 45 minute video I made about how blending works. Uh, so we're not gonna dive into it too in-depthly. But here we are going to combine these together. So here we have a left join on email address. So email is going to be joined on both of these and that's how it's gonna be combined together. So here we have emails on the left and we have emails on the right and here are all of our different things. I'm gonna move amount into a metric just because it is a metric and we wanna sum it usually. But if you wanted to also have um, the average as well, so you can add in here and we can just change this to average if you wanna do the average revenue per line there. So average and sum, bada bing, bada boom, ta-da. Okay, so now we've got this. All I'm gonna do is change this out to put in form name. What was it? Oh, did I not get the form name? All right, we need to add the form name in. See you guys? Biggest problem, date, first name, form name, ta-da. Okay, so now we should hit save, we should be good. Bam, we should have form name right here. And we are off to the races. So form name and here is the revenue per form, ta-da. There you go. So without much effort, uh, that is the amount of revenue that each form has generated, okay? And that's not the biggest. We wanna have some other more complicated things. So let's look at these conversion rates and average days in system. So average days in system, how do we do that? It's gonna be two dates that we're gonna to wanna to combine the difference between the dates of. So let's just create a little form over here. And we're gonna do date diff, and we're gonna do date submitted purchase date. Okay, so this should give us the days in a system. And if we hit apply, that should fix itself. If it's a negative number, we did it opposite. Don't worry. I always forget which one goes which. So you need the uh, the most recent date first. And then we were going to put in a comma and date submitted. Okay. There we go. So now we have our days in system and we want to hit average. Then we have the average days in system, ta-da, ta-da. And you're probably asking yourself, how on earth do we, uh, for example, color code this, do all those other pieces? Well, how you can do that is quite simple, actually. So now how do you uh, kind of color code this? In the style settings, what you can do is you can come on down here. I'm gonna get rid of this. I already, because I copied the style, all you have to do is hit add a conditional format. We're gonna do a color scale. We're gonna use it on the average days in systems. And we are gonna reverse this. We want it to have a cute green, our better than data green, and we'll have hot pink, why not? On the bad. So the higher the number, right? That's 100% here. The redder it is, the lower the number, the greener it is. So now if I hit save, ta-da! We are now in business here. So now we have the average days in system per contact form. Um, we can then do the same thing. So that's like pretty much it. You can then kind of change this to be what you'd like. I personally really enjoy the conversion rate. So if you add in the core number of emails, we can add in the number of uh, transaction IDs. And then what we can do is make a new field that is count distinct of transaction IDs divided by count distinct of emails. And then this is going to give us the number of unique, um, or sorry, we want to do count of emails, count distinct of emails. So this will be like a higher number because if a person uh, does multiple transactions, what you'll see is that it will be a higher number. So here we go. Number, it's number, and it's going to be a percent. Ta-da! Okay, so now we have a percentage of the number of emails that have turned into transactions um, because we now have the number of transaction IDs. And if we double click on this line, ba -ba -ba -bum, we now have everything kind of that we needed. We have the number of emails, right? The number of forms, the number of transactions, so unique transactions. We then have the number of the average conversion percentage. Okay, pow. 
And so now you can color code this to your heart's desire. And if you ever needed to kind of like validate what they bought, my personal favorite is where you add a chart at the bottom that has your transactions, your purchase data. Purchase, we have a lot of uh, email purchase. All right. And then what you can do is you can add in the email and then what they purchased. So the product name. Alrighty, let's just put it, make this bigger again. And then if you click on this, like what did the contact us buy? It should filter. Nope, it's not going to. So that now you can see, hey, for example, this person has a high LTV. Where did they enter from? They were a servicing query. There were $6,000. Their average days in system was 182. Their unique transactions were two. And now you are off to the races. So now, what do you do with this information? You can go say, hey, we need better leads. We need better uh, follow-up processes to sh lower the average days in system. Uh, you can say we need to increase the LTV by adding more transactions per email address. There's a lot of ways you can slice and dice this. Um, inside of Better Than Data, we actually teach you how to do this via BigQuery, um, which you can have a lot more dynamic information. You might be screaming at the screen of like, hey, I wanna know the number of unique customers as opposed to unique transactions. In order to do that, you have to blend or run a calculation in Google Sheets. It just adds a level of complexity. Whereas if you bite off that bigger complexity in the beginning with BigQuery, it becomes a lot simpler. So there folks is how you do this. Let me just go back to view mode. We now have kind of the overall start here. We then have this one down here. And if you select any individual email, you now can build out your system and processes to match and have the lifetime value tied to where they entered. And if they have multiple entries, how do you handle that? That's the little nugget I'm gonna leave you with. What happens if they filled up multiple forms? How do you handle that? Um, again, we cover all this in kind of BigQuery uh, and doing it. We call it the Foresight Backend System to calculate every single thing there. So that's all folks. If you made it this far, apologies if there's any audio noise. I'm currently in Medellin, Colombia. Um, but if you like this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below and let me know that you made it through the end of the video by leaving Colombian flag as a comment. We'll see how that goes. All right. Talk to you in the next video.